I'm building a two trailer tiny house. Today, we're gonna look at the subfloor. First of all, we're gonna look at insulation and then the structure. Let's talk insulation. Now, the more insulations available that I've looked at, but I've just looked at ones that are readily available and uh, cost effective. So the first option I looked at was a bolt fill insulation. So this is polyester, which is much like fiberglass and it's not itchy. The problem with bulk fill insulation was the amount of volume that it needs. With such a big bat underneath the trailer, it was gonna take up a lot of space, so I had to accommodate for that, but it also meant I wouldn't be able to build in the under, under trailer storage that I wanted to do. And the other reason is it doesn't provide a moisture barrier, and you need something to support the bats underneath. So this usually means a sheet metal pan, or a sheet metal pan rather, or a vermin mesh to support um, the bat, which means a lot more work uh, and effort putting insulation up underneath the trailer. The next I looked at was foil-based insulation. So I don't actually have any, this is just our foil I've bent up to show you, So, it, which is effectively very similar to what it is. Um, that goes underneath the joists of the, um, of the floor or the ribs in our case, and works by reflecting radiant heat. So in summer it reflects the heat away from the house and in winter reflects the heat back into the house. Um, the problem with this is it's effectively useless when there's airflow. Um, so in some, what happens is the airflow moving over the foil cools the foil and draws the heat out as opposed to reflecting it. Um, so in summer that's great because it helps draw the heat away that we, we're trying to keep out of the house. But in winter, which I'm probably most concerned about floor insulation, that heat that's meant to be reflected back up into the subfloor is actually being drawn away by the airflow moving over the foil. So I didn't go with that. The last one I looked at was foil board. So foil board is EPS covered with two layers of uh, foil on either side. Now let's address the elephant in the room. I don't like EPS. It's horrible to work with and it's terrible for the environment. But in this circumstance, I just couldn't find a product that suited my needs better. Um, so foil board has foil on either side and it works like foil before where it reflects radiant heat. So back into the house and away from the house in summer. But the added value of the, the foam insulation in between negates that cooling effect of the foil that we spoke about before. And the R value of the foam also helps insulate. By installing this up underneath the ribs of my trailer, it also helps uh, insulate the steel of my trailer, which reduces thermal bridging. Um, now we're in Australia, so I'm not too concerned about that, but it does help. It is super lightweight, which is awesome. It's pretty much self-supporting, uh, so very easy to install. Uh, I've had a couple of people ask me about vermin uh, with the foil nesting in it. I've been using this for 18 months in the micro tiny house that I did, and I haven't seen any evidence of vermin trying to nest in it. I guess long term, we'll see. Others might have a different experience. And the other question I've had about it is stone damage. Now, it's installed right up underneath the combing, so it's pretty out of the way, but th there is a possibility in some parts of the trailer that it could be susceptible to stone damage. But to be honest, it's super easy to repair with um, some aluminium tape. And if I do damage a panel, it's not hard to pull a panel off and put a new one in. And the other thing is, is because it's foil and I can I seal this up with aluminium tape, it provides a moisture barrier to the subfloor of my trailer. So this is what I've gone with. I've attached the foil board to the trailer by fixing it to the underside of the ribs wherever I can. On the outer perimeters where I have to put my leveling stands up underneath the trailer and my wheel wells, I've gone level with the bottom of the ribs and just on top of my chassis rail. Putting the foil board underneath the ribs gives me two benefits. The first benefit is insulating some of the steel on my trailer to stop thermal bridging through to the floor of my tiny house. But the main benefit is I get this air gap between the foil board insulation and my floor. The air gap helps dramatically improve the performance of the foil board and in insulating the floor. Because it has a reflective foil, it allows the heat to be reflected back up into the house without losing it externally. I've done the same with the side trailer here, except for this space back here. I've boxed out an area that drops down underneath the trailer so that I can incorporate this into the underbed storage and gives me almost five, 600 mils worth of height. This is gonna be perfect for bulky items such as my hiking pack, esky, camping gear that'd be difficult to store other places. It also means that I can utilize that space that underneath the trailer that would have gone to waste. Let's have a look at the material they use for the subfloor. So the first option I looked at was plywood. Um, now plywood didn't work out at the lightest, but it was one of the lighter options. Uh, but it was the most expensive and that's why I haven't gone with it. I know people do use a, lot, a thinner plywood at times with, for floors to reduce the weight of their tiny house, but to be honest, that can lead to sagging. So uh, when you go to a thickness that's thick enough for a floor, it wasn't entirely the lightest, but also got pretty expensive. So I didn't go with plywood. 
The next option was particle board flooring or structure floor, however you like to refer to it. Um, cost effective, but the heaviest option. So I didn't go with that. So the product I've gone with is OSB flooring. Now, this stuff was the lightest option and really cost effective. This is an 18 mil OSB, uh, which is only meant to go over a maximum of 450 centers. And my trailer has 600 mil ribs. And now we don't have to comply to the, the building code or adhere to standards. It is a really good measure of how's a product gonna perform over time. But looking at my trailer, there wasn't many areas that had either a point load, which is like a leg pushing down on the floor, or a constant dynamic load such as a walkway. And so I realized that I could just brace in between the ribs in those areas to support the floor in the middle of the ribs. Um, and this stuff is really stiff and putting that down actually made this really solid. Now that's great because it means I didn't have to go to a 22 mil uh, OSB, which has saved me, saved me 60 kilos in my project, which is great because I really want to do a hardwood floor, which is 200 kilos and that 60 kilos is already counted towards that. Um, now, having used OSB before, I know this is going to bring out the formaldehyde police, but do your research on this stuff. This stuff, at least the one that I am buying, is now made with formaldehyde free glue and its emissions are tested to an Australian standard. It's also important to note that all of these products here that we've just looked at are manufactured products. A lot of them have some level of emission. Uh, unless you're going pure timber, there, there is a likelihood they're going to have some level of VOC uh, or formaldehyde. But at least now, OSB, I know it's had a bad rap in the past, formaldehyde free glue uh, and its emissions are tested against an Australian standard. I've attached the OSB by laying it lengthways along the trailer. The major axis or the long edge of the OSB needs to be perpendicular to the joists or the ribs of the trailer in this case. I've used a polyurethane sealant on top of the joist to help stop movement in the boards, but more importantly, to stop any squeaking against those metal ribs. And I've offset the end joints of each of the boards to help give it strength. The bump out to my side trailer is going to house my shower. I built the shower base into the structure of the floor. The steel that comes off the trailer has a slope in it that slopes my floor down to the front here where I have a recess for a great drain. This saves me having to use compounds later to create the slope in my floor. Uh, and makes it much easier to deal with, particularly because great drains need quite a deep recess into the floor. Now I know OSB isn't ideal for a shower base, but it has to have a waterproof membrane anyway, and I've been running this in the micro tiny house for over a year and a half without any issues. My wall frames will then come along the side here, frame it out, and my, my wall lining will come down and meet the floor here. So that's the subfloors. I've got these things wrapped up now so they'll stay weather resistant until I can get them covered. Our next steps is we move on to the cool stuff. We start framing, which I can't wait for because we have these two things that just look like trailers are gonna start taking shape into a house. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, as always, don't hate, educate. If you see something's video can be improved, comment down below and I'll respond to you if I can. In the meantime, go build cool stuff. I've gotta make the most of this glorious weather and I'll see you soon.